Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it. Great to be with you on a Monday in Tail Bar City Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, and you. Lots to get into at the spring game. The first half, uh, hey, it was good to be there. Second half, there was some hitting going on. Not quite uh, over the top hot takes, but some things you can smile about as you head into the summer and Pray that the fall is uh, better than past falls. Numbers to get in, 466-3776-800-825-5865. Get us on Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio. Chris Schmidt, give me a follow. Give Elijah a follow at Herbal Essence on Twitter. Email chris at hailvarsity.com. So, spring game impressions. Thoughts on Huskers that are off to the NFL. Uh, we'll get into the scheduling addition and some and subtraction for Nebraska football. And, of course, uh, basketball news, a new point guard for Fred and company, the mayor uh, getting a six foot four dude that's uh, pretty versatile, and Husker baseball getting sopranoed over the weekend. So uh, a lot to dial into. Elijah, what's up? What do you know? How are you? Oh, it was a great weekend of Husker sport. Aside from the baseball team, like it's one thing. I mean, at least the fans were there and in, in supporting it. It's the most disappointing performance from Husker baseball this weekend in front of the the biggest audience. Uh, and I guess Will Bolt was asked about that the, the pressure last week, and maybe the pressure got to him a little bit. So I was a little disappointed in Husker baseball. But um, the, the main thing that's disappointing me this weekend is that Aaron Rodgers is still not a Bronco. See, just to be <laughs> patient, my friend. Elway is putting together uh, Von Miller, uh, a quarterback to be named later, 17 pounds of gummies, and uh, I don't know, maybe uh, some some uh, a, a gift card to John Elway Toyota. I don't know. but Well, I think right now he's probably convincing Peyton May, like, yo, just just go give Aaron Rodgers a call, tell him that you went and got your next ring in Denver, and that it's, it's the place you got to go. Maybe, maybe Peyton can, can – I mean, it's not Aaron Rodgers that needs convincing. It's the Packers front office, I think. Well, who knows. what? The, <laughs> that's the final death blow if you're Green Bay, honestly. I mean, with, with some of the, the play calling and how conservative you were and the guy wins an MVP, a draft, it, it's a mess. And I don't know that the, the future is long in Green Bay for Aaron Rodgers. You can dig your heels in. Great. He'll just retire and pull a Favre and a year later be somewhere else. So with the spring game, some some initial thoughts. Uh, one, I thought the offensive line was was what I was most interested in, but I thought that that mentality, that physicality, it, it's been a talk of spring. We've heard from Greg Austin. We've heard from some of the offensive linemen. We've heard from defensive players. We've heard from Adrian Martinez. And just, you know, where is this group at on the offensive line? And you've got nine choices. You've got five guys that need to start. And you got a couple of starting spots with Hymas and Farniak off to the NFL to to replace. So you feel good about uh, the upside and future of Turner Corcoran because of his talent level. Uh, You feel good uh, that someone will emerge at a guard spot. And it's guys with plenty of experience. And the majority of the line has uh, has starting experience, so that's a nice thing. Even though, honestly, you look on paper, they're they're all really really young, except for if Sichterman's to win that that right guard spot. But my biggest takeaway was was the intent of this spring, and the intent was a to make up for lost time, b to really try and simulate the rigors of a Big Ten season. And yes, you went through just a a compact Big Ten season only, no non-conference, but what you're going to be leaning on this fall is going to be your offensive line. And it's charged with protecting your quarterback. It's charged with giving Adrian enough time to, to use some of these new toys at wide receiver that can get open. And it's also charged to continue the progression of where you've been. And where you've been is knocking on that top four, top three, top two rushing attack. 
give your head coach, give your offensive run game coordinator, give your new OC reason to believe and just go with some bread and butter. And that bread and butter being the run game. You, you've, you've seen the footage and video of the run the damn ball hat from from uh, from Piper and, and Turner Corcoran and Nebraska fans grin and nod. Yes, run the football. If that can be your identity, if that can be what you're hanging your hat on, good. And you've been a running football team. Can you be a great running football team? And it's not your quarterback doing all of it. We'll see if they can do that. We'll see if they can progress to being a team that is so consistent and effective that it opens everything else for this offense. That's the wide receivers. That's the tight ends. And, of course, you got to settle in on a rotation at running back. But with the offensive line, the, the biggest takeaways I have is you went physical, you went heavy, you had up to, to 30 to, to 35 to 40 guys that were dinged and nicked due to injuries. Uh, that's a short-term uh, sacrifice for a long-term gain. And that long-term gain is this defense making your offense better and having the ability to go heavy and have a back and forth and, and really simulate what you're going to try and see in the fall and make you better so you're not a liability, so it's not third and eight for the game-winning drive against Iowa and there's a strip sack or there's a false start or there's a holding penalty. Guess what? If you're getting downhill, uh, you're going to just wear out. You are going to body blow old school Nebraska style if you choose to and if this O-line can deliver. By the fourth quarter, uh, it could be the Purdue game. I mean, look, look at some some instances where it's worked for Nebraska. Rutgers, Purdue, where Nebraska just got in a rhythm running the football. Now it takes the right running back. And when Mills is when Mills and Azigbo have been healthy or they've been here and, and Nebraska's kind of had those, oh, wow, that's what it can look like moments. Uh, it, it's a sweet feeling if you're a Nebraska fan. And now you got to kind of narrow down where you're going to go with the running backs. I, I feel like they have good, and I think they have good enough in the running game. Do they have great? I don't know. I'm not going to say no. At first glance right now, it's a no, but there's still time to develop. Guys can become ultra high level. They can hit a different bar. They can reach a different ceiling. And from a skill set standpoint, what's been on film, what you've seen recruited, doesn't lie to me. I look at a guy like like Scott, and I know he uh, got tackled, but the point is, is, is he still busted off a 40-yard run. There's some physicality and explosiveness to him. And, and he lost a season. He had the whole COVID fiasco. Scott's a good back that cares and, and wants to, to win this race at running back. I see a wonderful combination and commitment from a guy like Gabe Irvin. I see him able to run between the tackles and then bounce it out, even when it was, was touch football. For him to run away from a few guys, I love where he can go, how versatile he is, how big he is. And, oh, by the way, the fact he cares at an early age. It's not, I like the idea of being a football player. No, I want to be a great football player, and I'm going to put the work in. And then there's Yant. And and I think Yant is going to be more than just a nice spring story. It's not Jamal Turner in his first spring game flipping into the end zone. And I think, you know, bless Jamal. I think he was a really good ball player. But, you know, he had the, the game winner. Uh, I think it was in Northwestern. Maybe it was North Michigan State. It was the Michigan State game. But the point is, is you saw a lot of flash, and there's been spring game heroes before. But with Yant, for him to to go bowling ball, uh, again, in context, against a, a third or fourth team defensive unit, the point is, is, is you see the, the power and the speed. And I think Kevin Kugler na- nailed the comparison. And I know he's... Not Le'Veon Bell, but the patience and then the acceleration where you see the hole, you hit the hole, and then you're getting a lot of yak after contact. And then he he took one to the house. So I love his combination. I love the ability to have a back that big that is 
talented, has good vision, and can just keep on grinding out yards. That's a nice weapon and asset for Nebraska. So good backs. Some of them maybe can be great. I don't know how the future looks for a guy like Ramir Johnson. We'll see where Steph's at. Nebraska's made a, a effort to get a different, bigger back. They have those. Nice combination of size and speed. And I think it can do well for Nebraska coupled with the offensive line. And then you've got the Adrian factor with the RPOs they're running. Having a guy like Toure in the slot to run slants when you have an option of lining up Betts or lining up Omar or you have – uh, the the other option to 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 get Martin you ha- that's the other thing you have options at the wide receiver spot that can get some separation so uh, total take is this offense got better this offense grew and it's time to show it next fall but you you have some some really nice puzzle pieces and I was encouraged by who they have and what I saw on Saturday, at least in the second half. And, and what I'll say regarding the running back position is, is we still don't know after the spring game who that feature back is going to be next year, but I was really impressed with Jacquez Yant because you could see out on that field, I, I can see the role that he's going to have in this offense in the fall. It's going to be that Amani Cross, oh, it's third and two, third and three, you need three tough yards, bring in Jacquez Yant. It's going to be awesome. Or, or inside the five-yard line, you don't know what to call? Oh, give, it, give it to your big back. Give, give it, it to your big back and let him run downhill. And it's perfect. It, it fills the need. I mean, you've seen Nebraska run screen passes on the goal line. You've seen them try to run fade routes. You, you've seen stuff and yeah, go, why are you calling that? Well, they have a back now that you can just hand it to and say, we need three yards. We have one play, maybe two. Go get it done for us. Well, and the other part of this, too, is he's a guy that you can leave in. You don't have to just say, heavy personnel. Great. You can bring in an extra t- uh, tight end. You can bring an extra uh, hog mauler on the – you can go big on the offensive line. Great. But now you don't have to – oh, well, uh, who are we going to put at running back? Oh, we don't trust anybody at running back. Or, man, is there anyone physical enough to get through the line? Now you have Yant, and guess what? Yant can Yant can have eight to, to nine carries or, or four to six carries during a drive. That's, that's what I want to see. Get me a guy – in this running game, in this rushing attack, with this hungry offensive line unit that can stay in the game and and you're not just shuffling in and out. Just you can still go by committee, fine. And and I think they will because they've got options. But if you have Yant, it's okay to 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 hang with a back. They gotta get somebody to get hot. I think that's been the other part of it too, right? I mean, you saw Mills was cl- clearly when healthy uh, a difference maker at running back for Nebraska coupled with the offensive line, just like Ziggy as he emerged before he went off to the NFL. I think you've got a guy like Yant that you can lean on for an entire drive. I think you got a guy like Scott you can lean on for an entire drive. And I think a guy like Gabe Irvin is somebody that can give all of it to you as well, uh, as well as catching the ball out of the backfield. I think the biggest thing that is – making coach held and the offense apprehensive is you're thinking about your quarterback's health you need to be able to do it all when you're in the game and we want you to pass block where are these guys at when it comes to pass protection and it's the biggest thing that keeps running backs off the field do they know the playbook can they keep adrian from getting killed can they catch the football can they run it do they go down easy uh where are they at with uh, with the ability to to know their role so that that's that's different for all the all different guys. I mean that it's not unison with where okay Irvin's at X here with the playbook and pass pro. Where's Scott at when it comes to playbook and pass pro? There's got to be a consistent level, and and I think that's what they're working towards. Because now if a guy can't pass pro, there, there's other uses for him, and it gets back to to turn a corker and say and run the damn ball. You, you know, don't throw it unless you want to or have to. Uh, and and I know that's part of the, the sexiness of, of this offense, scoring points, high flying, big plays, great. But you can you can rip off a lot of plays uh, when it comes to uh, to running the football. That can be a big play. It doesn't always have to be downfield passing. But with this offensive line, and if you have a respectful running game, guess what? It's going to open up that downfield attack. I thought Omar should have had a forty yard gain. Uh, that was one that was dropped. Uh, a couple of other guys that stuck out to me. Bullock, he's a kid out of Creighton Prep, mm-hmm. and and I, you know, I think he's a a big time player. And and I'm not saying starter or even second team, but he flashed, and that means he forced a fumble and recovered it. 
Also had a nice pass breakup in the end zone. Yance, another guy, uh, New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. Yeah, he uh, the the uh, Colorado, offensive guard out of originally Colorado from State. Norris and then Colorado State. In right, but he's a he's a German kid, mm-hmm. and and I love watching him move and hammer people. I mean, uh, I know he was playing some backup left tackle, also at guard. I was kind of I thought he looked good. I thought well, he, he looked really good. I just like the offensive line play as a whole New because Orleans, because yeah. in in that first half it was. Uh, we're, we're doing pop on the tackling, but that offensive line was holding nothing back, and, and that's what you expect from the trenches. The, the offensive line and the defensive line were battling, uh, showing heart, really showing toughness. Uh, I was impressed with what I saw from the offensive line. I didn't think they always opened up as big a holes. I would have liked them to open up against the second-string defensive line. But let's remember, that second-string defensive line has got a lot of guys who are going to get some serious play time next no, year. And, and you, you nailed it. And you've got depth and talent. We'll check in with Charlie McBride in less than an hour. His spring game thoughts. Jay Moore going to be with us. Blackshirt Husker NFLer. Part of Big Red Wrap Up. Uh, his takeaways with the spring. Uh, we'll get into some of the NFL draft picks. Uh, where your Huskers went. Two were drafted. A uh, couple other guys. Three others signed free agent deals. Uh, we talked about how important and necessary a physical spring was. He did have two kind of casualties one was Fedoni the other was Will Honus we'll talk to Jay about you know what Nebraska does at that inside backer spot without Honus Hail Varsity continues presented by the Nebraska Lottery and we're back fellas you think we could listen to the radio on Hail Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery yes that's awesome Thanks for spending time. Hail Bar City Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. We say hi to Blackshirt Husker NFLer Jay Moore and uh, more to it podcast with her dad. And of course, you see him on Big Red Wrap Up. Jay, thanks for the time. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right for for uh, Monday. I'm, I'm hanging in there. How are you boys doing? We're good, man. Uh, enjoyed uh, seeing thousands of our closest friends in the rail yard for the pregame show. It was wonderful to be back and uh husker fans got it going into the wee hours on on saturday it was uh a a good day for football on saturday i know you checked out the spring game and you know what are some takeaways you have from this spring uh some things that you're pleased with as a former player yeah you know i mean just the way the game was orchestrated you know how the first half went you know there's not a there's not a ton of earth shattering you know takeaways or or hot takes whatever which is i'm totally fine with because you know spring ball that's you know people come away with so many oh so and so could be doing this and you know they don't really amount to anything uh the upcoming season but you know like it's the the biggest takeaway that i that i can see from comparison comparison of last year to this year is i mean adrian martinez finally has some weapons to throw to let's be honest i mean that's that's, I mean, that's now new news. But the fact that you, you know, Omar Manning is out there contributing quite a bit. Torre, uh, Oliver Martin, you know, Xavier Betts. I mean, his weapons that he has to throw to this upcoming season is 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 a, is a, is a very nice thing to see. Because other than Wondell and you know maybe a, a few other guys ever, you know, now and then this last year, you know, there was a, there wasn't a whole lot to uh, deal to. So that's that's nice there. Uh, you know, I mean, Adrian. You know, it looked he looks a little lighter. You know, maybe uh, a step quicker. Maybe he's kind of get back to that first, that quick first step he had his, his freshman year before he kind of got dinged up and and then maybe gained a little too much, put a little too much muscle on. But you know, he looked he looked decent. Still makes some silly mistakes for a, a guy that has played so much. You know, just with some you know backwards passes and stuff like that. You're just you know you're just kind of you scratch your head at. But you know, there's. You, some guys did some good things in the, in the second half with with contact. You know, you now Yant had some you know some good good uh, good runs there in the second half when there was there was tackling and stuff. But I mean, overall, it, you know, it's it's a spring game. It's a it's a glorified practice. You know, it's and they've they've been through a lot this this spring. And I know it was really basic, and I'm sure fans wanted to see more, but. It was. Uh, I, I think they're they're making the steps in the right the right direction. It's just you know I don't you don't. I, I, I don't have. I wish I had some more, you know, takes for you. But I mean, it's just it was just a spring game, and I'm not going to over, you know, over uh, over analyze and and uh, you know throw too much Kool Aid out there for people to drink just because 
you know, this this team has has a lot, obviously, a lot to improve on and, and work on. And you know, you can't really take too much away from you know one glorified you know practice, in my opinion. Jay Moore's with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Jay, a thought though on on the defense. Where do you think the defense is good? Or it just looks good because it's better than, than past defenses. And, and piggybacking off of that, is it a, a good thing here with, with the, the way they were able to push the offense and kind of make them excel or at least wix, lick some wounds from time to time? You know about it real well, the back and forth. Uh, that's necessary yeah. for for team building. The offense taking their lumps, the defense taking their lumps, and the response part of it here. How do you how do you view that here with what the offense went up against and how much you, better it can make the offense potentially? Uh, I mean, when you you're going against you know really good defensive players, I mean Nebraska. That's where the you know arguably the the strength of the team, you know, because the defense was, was exponentially better than the offense this past season. And then you get, you know, a lot of those guys back, you know, especially in the secondary, uh, you know, the linebacker unit, you know, the the majority of the, uh, of the defensive line, you know, it's, you, there's really nothing left to, to kind of question except for in the defense is just where are you going to, you know, who's going to kind of stand out as your edge rusher, you know, is it, uh, uh, is it going to be a Caleb Tanner? Who's you know who's your guy that can can win on third down? Who's going to be your pass rusher? You know that's that's what you know this defense is kind of missing. But no, when you when you have that battle of of going back and forth with the offense and defense every day, that's what you want. You know you don't if if one team is if one side of the ball is owning you know that that practice every day, then you you have some concerns for that either the offense or the defense, depending who it is. And I think you know the defense is probably. You know, owned owned the offense here the last. You know, I, you know, I, maybe this last year. I don't know. I mean, you know, spring ball. You know, I think the the, the offense has picked it up. I think the, you know, just having the wide receiver, you know, core group get better, um, having Adrian some more time to, you know, have some better weapons to throw to. You know, offensive line I know is going to be much more improved. I know they're working on their physicality, but you want that. You want that constant battle. You want that competition. You know, you want that every every day in practice. That's just what you, that's where you get better. And you know, I, I know the off the defense is making the offense better, and the offense is kind of hopefully picking up their end of the bargain and make the defense better week in and week out. That's what you want. That's what you need. That's what makes all the great the great teams good. You know, the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the Notre Dames, you name it. You know, they're they're really good on both sides of the ball. So they do go good on good in the middle of the week for you know fifteen twenty minutes, whatever it is, and on a Tuesday or a Wednesday practice. Hey, that's you. You might be going. You're going against probably someone that's you know better than the team you're playing. So on Saturday, so that keeps you sharp. That keeps you up to speed. That's what that's what you want. And uh, you know, it's just both sides and all. You know, and even special teams. They got they got to get better, man. They they got to get better because this the schedule coming up is uh, is no uh, is no piece of cake. It's a, it's another grinder in the Big Ten. And and uh, obviously, when you haven't made a bowl game here in a while, this this is you got to start taking the steps in the right direction to, to see this process out. Jay, you mentioned special teams there at the end, and that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Was after struggles by the special teams and a new special teams, you know, coaching staff essentially the assistants handling it this year, along with Coach Dawson. We actually didn't get to see any special teams in the practice. The the punts were pretty much a one on one with the punter and the returner. Uh, is that something that surprised you that we didn't get to see that in the spring game after the the difficulties that the Huskers have found in uh, the special teams in recent years? No, because I know they've 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 worked on it plenty in in spring. You know, especially you know they've they've had a bunch of injuries in you know throughout the spring. You know, you don't want to. The special teams is where a lot of those injuries can ha- you know can can happen. You have you know guys running down full speed and breaking down. It's just it just seems you know those those can be a major issue. And I th- I think they've worked on it plenty this this spring. I even. The one you know practice I was able to get to. I was only there for maybe the first thirty minutes uh, and had to go. But I mean, it was all it was all special teams that they were they were working on and grinding on and doing drills. So obviously, it's been emphasized. It's been worked on. Not totally surprised at all. I mean, he, maybe you thought you might get a, a few reps, but I, listen, I mean, it's again, it's it's a practice. You know, it's there's they've I'm sure they've scrimmaged it plenty of times this spring. And you're just trying to save your guys' bodies. You know, you've had some unfortunate injuries 
already in, in spring ball and you just, you, you know, and this past year has been crazy enough. You know, you're just trying to get to fall camp uh, with a healthy squad and, and, and then, you know, and you're just trying to get, trying to get better. But they've put, uh, they've put forth the effort. I know that this, this spring and, and special teams. Jay, uh, your level of concern at, at inside backer with uh, the news on Honus, I thought he played great football last year and I know he's been dinged a lot in his career. Uh, Henrich, uh, Reimers are, are two guys that have seen time and done well. Clements had a good spring, and we'll see if he can make uh, the jump for, for more active duty uh, this fall. And Kolarvik, you get from Northern Iowa. That isn't going to replace a honus, but you have some strength in numbers there on the inside. Can it be okay for Nebraska? Yeah, I think it's okay. You know, it's that, that, that position has been a little – they, that, you know, you're going to have guys get dinged. That's, you know, obviously you don't want guys to have season-ending injuries and, and have to have any re- reconstruct, reconstructive surgeries. But yeah, I'm not. That's that's a pretty deep group, you know, with those guys you just mentioned. And I'm not, you know, I'm not terribly concerned because you know you, you still have, you know, how does you know JoJo Doman factor in in some of these situations, you know? And I, I think they're gonna be okay. I obviously don't want a honuses is a really really good football player and you know hopefully he can he can bounce back and 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 recover from this but yeah I'm not that 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 position group I think will be just fine and they have a, they have a hell of a coach in that room and to, to get those guys ready so I, I think they'll be okay obviously you'd, you'd love to have will but you know that's football it's a game of football things happen like that and injuries happen but I, I think they'll, they'll they'll come out of spring ball and out of fall camp. Uh, ready to roll with that linebacker core. Jay, a uh, thought with the NFL draft, and uh, you were a fourth-round pick. You're a guy who uh, played at such a, a high level at Nebraska. Uh, as you look forward here uh, with Hymas and Faniak getting picked and then three other free agent deals, you know what, what's your takeaway with uh, where Nebraska is at when it comes to, to this time of year with the NFL draft? you got about two minutes. Yeah, you know, obviously you want you want more and more guys being called and you know Thursday night and then super you know early on on Friday evening because that's uh, that's your your first round and your second round and your third round picks and you know it's it's not where you want it you know I, you, you want you, you're happy for guys that that get drafted and, and get opportunities because that's all it takes is an opportunity but you know you need you need to have, we need to start having guys getting picked a lot earlier. But, you know, you're, like I said, you're happy with those guys that, that got it. And this is, you know, the, the NFL draft, it's, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy Alabama, heavy Clemson. You know, it's a, you know there's this, the, the best teams get the most that guys drafted. So um, another, another year in the books where, you know, Nebraska just isn't, isn't where it needed. You know, I think the last first-round uh, offensive player for Nebraska was LP. And mm-hmm. I think the last first-round draft pick, defensively was probably Prince in 2011. Yep. You know, so that's that is a long time for to get in some first round draft picks and uh you know, we got we got we've had obviously some other really good players that have come after that, you know, that've been second and third round picks, you know, Amir and and uh you know, I'm probably missing a few other guys. Yeah, Sue but, and Levante, but overall it's been yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's been kind of a drought for the for the big red. Yeah. Well, it is it just shows you that we we haven't been to you know, Randy. I, you know, you put Randy Gregor yeah. in there. He would he, he would have been a first rounder if he didn't have his off the field issues. But you know, I think he was still a second round pick. Mm-hmm. But you know, it needs it needs to get better. You know, when we start getting more guys picked early, that's when that's when you're winning the West. That's when you're probably playing in Indianapolis for Big Ten championships, and that's when you're playing on New Year's you know New Year's uh, New Year's Day bowl games. Mm-hmm. But but until then, you're gonna you know you're gonna be scrapping to win the West and, you know, you know, scrapping to get the bowl games and, you know, fighting to, to beat Rutgers in Illinois instead of, you know, having going into the fourth quarter comfortably ahead. And that's just where we are. And, uh, you know, it, it will get better, but, you know, I just, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be tomorrow, unfortunately. It's just got to take some time. Jay Moore with us. Jay, take care. Thanks for the time. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, boys. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. With you, it's Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. So, I got a shout out to, to a, a few people. A, the search party that went with me down to Longwell's at 1045 on Saturday night. 
Long and short of it, I'm having a cocktail, sitting with Coriel, drinking a beer with Billy D, and I get up to use the can, and I come back, sit down, watch the Kentucky Derby, and I get ready to leave, got to go let the dogs out, feed them, get to a birthday party with Coach Brett, and my phone's gone. And I'm not Mr. Always Looking Down instead of making eye contact, but my phone's precious to my job okay (laughs) and someone was hammered and grabbed my phone my mistake by leaving my phone on a table that were the table was occupied by friends i'm having a beer with but somebody picks my phone up thinking it's theirs because they've had too many and the guy that was hammered is like uh where's my phone at to his buddy who was of sound mind and he's like bro that in your phone so I'm in I'm in a group text with with uh, with Kent and and Super Dave, and these guys live all around the country, and some of them live here in Nebraska, and we just they, we group chat in Nebraska football. So out of the blue, there's a group chat text to my phone, and Brett, the 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 gatekeeper of this drunk guy who picked my phone up, says, "Is this one of your phones? Uh, my buddy picked this up by a mistake." So long and short, I used the Find My Phone app on my wife's phone because she tracks me. <laughs> and we picked my phone up at 10.30. But as I left Longwell's at like 6.37 o'clock Saturday, I'm like, my phone's gone. And then she's about ready to use a tire iron on me because she's worried about what the phone bill is going to be if I have to get a new phone. Um, a similar story. This one time, this is years uh, Who ago. hasn't lost their phone and I'm freaking out? Mm. And it's my own fault. I could. I sh- I was texting her back saying, "Yeah, I'm finishing my beer. I'll be home to let the dogs out and get get some food for them." And then you just leave your phone there. You're at a table with people you know. You think they're going to watch it? Well, it's not their job to watch well, but, it. But, like, you, you but, think, but who, how does it walk yeah, away? But yeah. legit, the guy when we were outside, it was awesome at Longwells. We love those folks, and the rail yard was incredible. So it was great to be normal. But that's a normal Saturday. Who hasn't lost their phone on a Husker game day? <laughs> <laughs> um, my brother one time left his phone on top of his car as he was driving. Oh no! And it flew off the top. No idea where it was. Um, but eventually, again, the, the Find My Phone app uh, used that, and we discovered it. Uh, it was inside of Brewski's here in town. Someone and, found it and yeah, so, dropped uh, it off? Yeah, so just walk inside the Brewski's. Hey, anyone find a phone? And this one guy at the bar, he was also absolutely hammered, had the phone, and uh, just bought him a beer for his uh, for his trouble and got the phone back. But well, that, that, that Find My iPhone app is a, it's a lifesaver. Well, Brett, shout out to you for taking care of your buddy A, B, uh, turning the phone back in. And 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 I, I was that guy. I was like, I need I need an announcement from the DJ down at Longwell's because they're bumping music. People are having a hell of a good time. And my my late father's picture is, is on the cover of my phone. And they said, "Well, describe your screensaver." It's like it's a creepy old man that's probably <laughs> staring at your girlfriend. <laughs> is there a creepy old man staring at your girlfriend? Is that the screensaver? Uh, but uh, it was found. It was great. And uh, shout out to Timmy B, uh, Nick, and, and Coach Brett for the search party because we went down there with my wife's phone. And they're like, come on, let's go find it. Let's go dumpster diving because I, I, I swear the way it was beaconing that it was it was in the garbage somewhere. You're cleaning cups off, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And then you can't contact anybody. Got a, I have an iPad from, from 2009, allegedly. That thing is freaking worthless. That's my only other contact backup. So uh, all's, uh, all's well that ends well. And uh, we, uh, we had a celebratory round before we called it a night. So Nebraska able to get things shifted around for September 4th. Fordham, the fighting Lombardis, are, are coming to town September 4th which is great. Nebraska will kind of reconfigure things with Southeast Louisiana. 500 grand's the, the, the price point for Nebraska to get a home opener uh, on the real week one, not week zero for football. So here's your question. Is Nebraska bowl eligible? This is very forward. Is Nebraska bowl eligible by Halloween? I'll say yes. Well, they no, the answer should be they better be. Mm. Right, if you're a Nebraska fan, because you've got a way here to go 
get a hard-earned victory at Illinois. We'll be on the road for that. Hail Varsity Friday, Saturday from uh, Champaign. And you get Illinois, you get Buffalo, and, and most of, of Coach Lance Leipold's staff is coming with him to Kansas. So you are you are in scramble mode if you're Buffalo, who was coming back with a pretty decent team, but you're going to have transition. You don't take Buffalo lightly, obviously, but uh, they're going to be a shell of themselves, at least from a leadership standpoint, potentially, and you have the transition. Then you get uh, Fordham. Which means you could you could be you, you should be you need to be three and zero going into Oklahoma, whatever happens at OU happens at OU, and then you get a bounce back game against uh, Sparty, which is win it's winnable you know it's also very losable if you're Nebraska, but I like what Nebraska did, and uh, Bill Moose is is thinking of his team. It's huge to do this. You do it to. Uh, continue to have a better flow to the season. Lord knows you want uh, as much consistency as possible after the choppy 2020 season. So if you get a better flow to the season, you get a showcase here to recruits, you're going to get people into Memorial Stadium on officials for the Buffalo weekend, for the Fordham weekend. And then from a local business and fan standpoint, you're going to have more Saturdays like you did for the spring game where you're running out of beer and you're running out of bottled water and everyone's smiling and having a good time because of weather and you're back doing what you love and that's watching Nebraska football on Saturdays. So uh, a three-point plan made tons of sense. That is huge for Nebraska to get this done. Yeah, let's not also discount the fact that this is a game where the, the starter should be out of this game by the third quarter. That's fine. When you, when you look at this Fordham team, they, they play in a league that's not very good. They're usually not very good in that league. They didn't even have a season last year, really. I think they played like two or three games. Nebraska needs to beat teams to gain confidence. Mm-hmm. And if you put a smackdown on somebody, that'll make you feel good. You're going to have a real come to Jesus in Norman the following weekend. But uh, some success can, can kind of grow that confidence. And... You know what, Nebraska needs all the uh, the breaks they can get. This is a break by their own doing because of your AD, the Moose, making it happen. And you're going to get a, a, a nice runway build up here with some momentum. And God forbid you drop the game to Illinois. It's not like you haven't done this uh last season and it wasn't a dogfight two years ago and there was enough turnovers in a 55-36 shootout. Illinois played you tough. Illinois out physical you a lot of times uh, when Lovey was there. There's a lot of things about Illinois football that wasn't great, but being able to hammer people was, was one thing they did well. So you go figure out a way to kick the season off with a win with all of college football's eyes on you because you are the game of the two biggest names that are playing that Saturday for Week Zero. And uh, you build some momentum, man, and you get out of the gate – uh, the right way. We'll wind down this first hour. It's Hale Varsity. We're presented by the Nebraska Lottery. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time, Charlie McBride's 10 minutes away. Greg Smith will update us on the recruiting weekend for Nebraska. Also, some spring thoughts. Greg and I did an incredible video on the field after the spring game except the wind kept blowing the uh the camera down so i don't know that it made it (laughs) off the cutting room floor to 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 posting on youtube or or hailvarsity.com a quick thought here from from cam taylor Britt on on the offensive line and where where nebraska's run game is at we'll hit all of this with coach mcbride just where he thinks the team's at after a very physical spring but uh Tell Cam Taylor, Britt, you can tell by what he said that he's impressed with where the O-line's going. It's gotten a lot better. A lot. We're downhill, straight pounding the football, man. Uh, we can see the offensive linemen are taking pride in it. Uh, they're blocking now. Just giving Adrian more time or even just, you know, driving guys again to the second level and open up a hole or a gap for the running back to get through. It's looking a lot better. Do you just get this sound, this sense, when you when you hear from players that – not only are they surprised, oh, look what our team can do, but there's this there's element of surprise in their voice, not that they can be a good running football team, but 
why aren't we a good running football team? Why why is that not a focal point? And in the run offense has been a, you know it's been sixty forty run to pass, but when it comes to just being physical and getting downhill and kind of having that attitude that mentality, you hear. And and you see offensive linemen wearing hats, run the damn ball. You look at you look at Coach Austin. Let's let's get physical. Let's line up and run the ball. You hear from Cam Taylor, Britt, man, they're they're doing well. And then you couple that with the running backs, wonderful. Now all you got to do is call it. I mean, now now all you got to do is call a a, a a power. I mean, it's one thing to say, as Greg Austin, we want to run the ball. It's it's one thing for his linemen to wear hats that say run the damn ball. It's another thing to actually go out there and run the ball. And if and if you're do if you're having some success against this front top unit, defensive unit, I'm sorry, but I, I I will look at the Nebraska's front seven, and I would put them in the top three or four of the Big Ten as far as just stoutness, mm-hmm. not 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 being pushovers to stop the run. They have that experience and ability. Now they got to do it on a on a day to day or or a game to game basis. I mean, but, Nebraska did a pretty good job controlling the the run game of Ohio State last year, and that's a Ohio State team that put up for six bills uh, in the final two games of the year. Yeah, I was gonna say they put up three hundred plus yards on the ground in the Big Ten championship and then game. They rolled Clemson running the ball. Mm-hmm. And, and Nebraska held their own. Now, now Justin Fields could do about whatever he wanted against Nebraska, so maybe they weren't focused on running the ball but nebraska did hold their own really well against probably the best if not one of the best uh rushing attacks in the big 10 last year that that team got better running the football but nebraska didn't didn't flinch Mm -hmm. out of the gate reminder about west blue realty uh get your friends uh, west blue realty a call if you're looking for a residential home in lincoln or the surrounding community tom luby at 402-540-3768 kelly hoff snyder at 402-202-2312 Go find him today, 1120K Street, Suite 200, westbluerealty.com. Let's get you qualified right now for the ESPN uh, Memorial Day kickoff. There is your Sounders steak on the grill and your chance to win a Weber Spirit E210 gas grill from Capital Patio and the Flame Shop, a $100 gift card from Campbell's Nursery and Garden Center, and a $100 gift card to Leon's Gourmet Grocer. B collar 9 now. You qualify the giveaway May 21st, 466 3776 466 3776 800 825 5865. Collar 9 now qualifies. Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Back to an hour two, it's Hail Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbo. We say hi to Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, Mondays with Charlie. Coach, how's the weather up there? A little damp, a little cloudy, mid-60s here. <laughs> you got it. Same thing. Well, everything's wet Everything's wet around here. Jesus. Yeah. Well, we had <laughs> sunshine and felt like a early season ball game uh, Saturday with a little heat and humidity and fans in the stands man it was great to be a part of and and I know you enjoyed watching it how how was your weekend yeah. good good yeah i did i enjoyed it it was good to see fans back and you know that was uh you know you know fun to watch you know at least i don't know how many recruits or if they even could have them in it then but uh, it probably is going to impress them. Just the fact that I see, I saw a, lot of, a few other, you know, games and mm-hmm. some in other conferences, and yeah, and they, you know, <laughs> they had a practice, and there was hardly anybody sitting in the stands, and it was, you know, except for probably a bunch of parents and friends and stuff like that, but it wasn't like Nebraska. Nebraska did have a number of recruits in. You couldn't have any contact or talk to them if you're a player or or coach but it was on their own dime and they got to go watch and that's setting up some uh, some official visits here for further down the road so it was a pretty impactful weekend with some of the kids in Nebraska is looking at for 2022 and 2023 yeah that's good now yeah, that's that that's that's what helps you know you don't know after this year it still isn't over it's still mm-hmm. kind of 
confusing at times, but I think they're doing the right things. Coach Charlie McBride's with us Mondays with Charlie Hale Varsity Radio. So let's get down to it. What did you like? What did you see? And what have you been hearing? How do you think the spring went? <laughs> well, 15, day, 15 days of practice like is not like we used to have. And mm-hmm. if we had 20, you know, and it was so much different because it was pretty, uh, you know, it was it it was like a real real game, you know. In other words, you know, it was you know pretty serious. And uh, but I think that uh, you know when you have 15 days or whatever it is, and so many days of hitting, you can understand some of the stuff. Uh, you know, there little things like angles of pursuit were not good. You know, on defensive sometimes, and you, when you have a game where you're just playing thud, you actually kind of work against your real fundamentals in tackling. I mean, it gets, you know, so I think what you have to do is say it's live, except don't take them to the ground and don't do, you know, protect each other, mm-hmm. you know, and, and things like that. And I think, I think for the players, it's a little bit harder because, you know, especially in the open field, um, you know, it's it it just you know you're supposed to not take the guy, not you know hit him hard, just thud him and this and that, and you know that that's hard stuff. I mean, it it really is, and it's frustrating at times for the defensive players because you know you you kind of aren't aren't really prepared like you would be in a game as far as your mental part of it. Charlie McBride's with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Coach, uh, the offensive line, the defensive line, two things that need to be a strength uh, in uh, football and in uh, in Nebraska's long, rich history. They've been strengths. And did you watch the offensive line? I want to go there because I know you, you've spent a lot yeah. of time in your career uh, with the offensive line. What you what'd you think of that uh, group when it when it got down to some hitting? Well, I think it, I think they did a lot. I mean, they they were much. If there was one thing that was, you know, that that was impressive as both sides of the ball and their offense and defensive lines. You know, I I thought they did some really good things. Um, you know, a little bit. You know, they just like anything else, you really need to work hard both ways, pass block and pass rush. You know, th- those are the two things. And then you know, yeah, when you're an offensive lineman you have to become kind of a nasty person that's nice, <laughs> you know, that thinks a little bit more than a defensive line. That might, you know, I mean, you really have to be, you know, focused on what you're doing. And, uh, you know, and I thought, you know, when I, I thought there for a spring game, I thought it was pretty good. And you could see that they're going to get a lot better. I mean, they're just, you know, more repetition of fundamental stuff and, and that, and if they if have a good summer and work hard at the things that are that they can without banging each other, and you know, work on their footwork and stuff like that, I think is really important. Coach, uh, Nebraska seems to to be a little more dynamic at wide receiver. There's some options at running back. You couple that with an experienced quarterback. And the offensive line that that looks more physical, and you know, Scott mm-hmm. r- Scott really put him to work this spring it sounds like i mean it was a very physical camp where where guys were were dinged up and injured so i think that's good and having the right. de- having the defense push the offense and vice versa it's kind of music to my ears but can you speak to just the the importance of going up against a high level defense or also going up against a high level offense how that can push one another both sides of the ball to being really good come game time in the fall. Right. Well, I, I think one of the things, you know, you always hear coaches, including me, always say you can't make mistakes. But, you know, in the, in the spring, mistakes are the way you learn a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and I, and I think, you know, that, that, that they're, 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 you don't want to say they're as important as doing things right. They're not, but. You know, they're they're how you really teach a young player, especially. You know, um, most of the older players pretty much know what's going on. Uh, you know that way. But I think you know the the watching a player focus uh, and and you have to watch the film to watch a kid do some of that kind of stuff. And you can almost tell at times when he gets sloppy and things like that and doesn't 
you know, just doesn't do things right. It's it's kind of it's kind of tough. Uh, you know, and you know, the offense and defensive lines are pretty much comparable as far as what you're looking for. Um, you know, you're you're looking for the strength and the meanness and toughness of the kids and how they're using their hands and how they're you know protecting. You know, their responsibilities. We were a gap responsibility team, and one of the things we didn't think we could do was two gap, and that means you're responsible for b- both gaps, and th- that can be. Uh, you know, you can. <laughs> you have to understand that if you're taking one gap and you're not sure, and you go for the other gap, and then he, re, you know, your little move will bring him back to where he belongs, <laughs> where he's, you know, where where you're originally responsible for. That those are the things that hurt when you're just a one gap team. Mm-hmm. When you're a two gap team, it's it's you really have to be Superman, and there's only one guy I see on the field that could do that. And uh, uh, and that's that's the kid that's the freshman from South Dakota. I mean, oh wow, okay. It, it, you know, you know, one of the things I, you know, like I remember way back when Christian Peter was, you know, just a strong, strong kid. I we put him in. We're playing Oklahoma State or something on the goal line, and I, he said, he I was saying to me, what should I do, coach? I said, just take the center and knock him into the backfield, okay? <laughs> you know, just blow him up. And he knocked him into the quarterback. The quarterback fumbled the ball and and stuff like that. Well, that's you know that's how you gain confidence. Even though, you know, you just feel better about yourself. You know, and that, that's a, that's a big thing. You know, if you got some coach screaming at you all the time, and after that it starts to sound like your father mm-hmm. or your mother. You know, <laughs> after a while it's like, eh, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the old saying, take the garbage out, will you? Now, not not two weeks from now, you know. <laughs> it loses a little impact. Charlie McBride's with us, Hale Varsity Radio. Well, the thing that I'm interested in, too, Coach, with this offense, you mentioned the offensive line, the, the RPO element of the offense where you can call a play and based on what the defense is showing you, you can roll with a run-pass option where – uh, right. you, you fire off the ball, and if you don't get too far downfield and you're pass blocking, it can be a run, and uh, a run yeah. can turn into a pass based on uh, an alignment. And I look at what Nebraska <laughs> did Saturday with uh, you know either some crossing routes or some some slant routes with Toure, the, the new slot guy. I mean, I, uh-huh. I think there's a lot of potential here. But, you know, just spend a second on, on what the RPO element – can do to defenses and how how much of a bind uh, that style or, or that part of offensive football can put on defenses. Well, I think one of the things is is it, you know when you scout a team uh, defense well, when you're looking at it from the defensive side when you scout a team you really have to, you really prepare your linebackers or your drop guys any anybody the you know, linebackers may be going but somebody may be dropping or somebody's mm-hmm. responsible for a lot of the slants you know, and draws and screens and how they react to certain blocks. A lot of times you can read, um, you know, when you study film, you can, the guys will do different things on different plays. In other words, especially on running plays. On fast plays, they, you know, they're just, they have their releases and they, and you can pretty much tell it's a, you know, it's going to be a pass or you're going to, you know, have to follow him or do your, if you're a man, you're going to have to cover him. And and then react to things after that, and you know whatever happens. The biggest thing is just find out guys looking in the backfield to see what's going on, and that's all it takes. Mm-hmm. Guys going to get beat deep for sure, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of times that happens even in zone coverages. You know, you just say a lot of it's not man. I think in zone coverages too, you're looking in the backfield, you lose your guy that you're supposed to be covering. So it's you know it's it's the Positioning and of 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 the play, uh, you you learn a lot from your study habits on the film. Uh, you know, it's just such a complicated thing to read. Really, how many things you really have to do? I I mean, I sat down here one day and wrote down all the things you need to be to be a leader, just mm-hmm. a leader. And you know, I had thirty four things. What are you going to remember all those things? You got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. But some are, you know, some kids are better than others at at you know what they put their mind to or, or what th- some do things without even knowing it 
Mm-hmm. You know, we'll do things on the field without even having to have any kind of practice at all. But Coach, what I uh, found that yeah, go ahead. I was to say, what what did you think of the the running backs? What what did you think of, of the running backs once they got to tackle time? <laughs> the big guy, he did pretty good. Job. <laughs> <laughs> so you <laughs> like you like Yant? Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. I mean, it, but they all, you know, they all, every one of them did something good. Mm-hmm. You know. I think again that you're they're part of their practice. They're playing that thud, and you know maybe they're not lowering the boom on a kid like they'd like to, you know, and um, and stuff like that. So there's there's kind of a, a, a kind of an element in there that isn't real. Real. Mm-hmm. I mean it, it it's just normal. It happens everywhere, every mm-hmm. time, every week. You know, that when you start doing that. I I always go back to the same thing, and and you, you need to do stuff live, except you need to protect each other. And we had practice, and we were banging people. I mean, but we just weren't cutting them. We weren't, sure, you know, doing things like that, especially with the offensive line. You know, wouldn't cut a guy or do something like that. And when you tackle them, you, you know, naturally, defensively, some guys are really owly. You got to be. Oh man, I had some guys that, you know, you could tell them. You could write a speech and give it to them, and they go in the game. Don't hit the quarterback, okay? I had a guy that hit the quarterback, turned him upside down, and nearly killed him. And Tom jumped all over him like Jack the Bear. So I was on him all over, you know. He was, and then he did the same thing the next time. I mean, he did the same thing. Who was who was the guy? Who who was the quarterback? Who was the guy? (laughs) Well, uh, Ken Graber. Ken Graver was the guy that did it, uh-huh. and uh, and I think um, I'm trying to think who his quarterback was, but I'll tell you why the thing made it worse is we only had one quarterback oh, for no. the spring game that time, <laughs> yeah. and he had to play on both sides for a while, and um, oh god, I can't remember, uh, you know, but I remember all the other you know, all the other stuff, you know, that we, and you know, he nearly he ch- he's going to chase me off the field too. That's I mean, funny. it was, you know, if you can't handle your players, you know, it was about that kind of a story. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, so he just was one of those guys. He's going to he's going to get you. I mm-hmm. mean, you, he just had that mentality. If you're moving, it means you kill it. That's you know. funny. Charlie McBride's with us. Hail Varsity Radio. Coach, we've got about a minute left. Uh, a thought on, on the, the Nebraska kids just with Farniak and – and Hymas going to the NFL. Uh, two two names called on on the draft this weekend. Yeah, well, I, it, the one thing is, is you look at how many teams those kind of draft choices are starting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where they. That's where they. That's where the, the, the bad thing about there's that that thing, and you know, you can always go out and you know, get interview a player. You can you can do all this stuff. But the progress he's going to make in between the time he leaves college and that is a big thing. And a lot of guys will really, you know, learn a lot and improve themselves that much. So I think, you know, they, they got all the tools. Okay. You know, and, and the things that they have to do, they'll be told right away. There won't be any fooling around with it. They'll be told you got to get your feet better. You got to mm. do this better. You got to do that better. You got to get stronger. You got to. So. And, and a lot of times kids will go to these kind of – they're kind of like camps or go mm-hmm. work out with some people and, and can do it every day. I mean, every day, mm-hmm. every day, every day, and and really improve themselves. And the repetition in football is what, what I think is the biggest mm-hmm. thing going. If you can get a lot of repetition at your position as a, as a coach, uh, your kids get a lot of reps, the better they're going to be. Charlie McBride with us. Coach, we'll talk next Monday. It was one. It was so much fun to spend time with you today. Thanks for the time. Okay, I'll talk to you when I'm older. That sounds good, Coach. You take care. <laughs> and we're back. Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio? On Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes! That's awesome! More chances for you to qualify for the ESPN Memorial Day kickoff. That's a grill. That's a gift card to Campbell's Nursery. That's a gift card to Leon's. Listen for that cue to call before six. Awesome to run down Charlie McBride, get his take on the offensive and defensive line. 
and a story about somebody who hit the quarterback uh, back when you could more readily hit a quarterback, but you still weren't supposed to. So that was funny. We welcome in Greg Smith, HailVarsity.com and Magazine Recruiting Insider. Greg, what could have been with the uh, the post-game video recap from you and me had the win not played with our emotions? How are you? Oh, boy. I, I am doing well. I had almost blocked that out until earlier today when, when it was, you know, 75-mile-an-hour wind gust, it felt like. But also uh, the post-game crew out there wreaking havoc on our video magic. Uh, <laughs> next time, next time, my friend. Uh, I'm ready to talk. Greg's there. The next thing you know, it's it's a ball tipped by a Missouri player. And uh, the phone, i.e. ball, is end over end. We are just waiting for Davison to dive and make a catch. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, we, repeatedly. We help there. Yeah. Uh, how much uh, help does Nebraska need after this weekend with some, some high-profile kids? It sounds like everybody had a, an incredible time, and what an atmosphere, not only in the stands, but around Lincoln, the rail yard, of course, where we were posted up for, for pregame and postgame festivities. But uh, what a showcase – and it looked like on social media, kids were blown away. What are some of the reactions you've been able to gather? Yeah, I think that that sums it up well. I think that a lot of kids um, were definitely feeling like it, it was a big-time atmosphere, which which is super interesting. And sometimes, and I think I was saying this to you on Saturday, is that you sometimes take for granted um, the atmosphere that Nebraska has, even though it's been a while. We see it every week, even though it was a muted atmosphere. Um, that was still as good as any of these kids would have seen for a spring game, and in some cases, some of the places that they might go during the season, right, given attendance around the country at other places. Um, and so you see kind of the excitement of the fans and them welcoming back, um, being back in there. And you've got a lot of prospects excited. I think what I think um, Jaron Kanak, the Kansas athlete uh, who's really on the rise, I think summed it up well. He said that, you know, I think this gave me a little taste of what this is actually like. If it gets better than this, it's going to be really crazy. Where is Nebraska at with some of these kids? And we'll start with, with Kanak and, and Myers, uh, two teammates from Kansas, obviously. And, you know, I, I always worry about, Clemson and Brent Venables because he he's he's the one guy who still likes to visit Kansas right and uh, and that's uh, that's that's home turf for him I look at Isaiah Simmons Kansas City product that had Nebraska ties and and look where Isaiah's at he's killing it for for the Cardinals now but and not to say Canick is is Simmons yet that's not fair to the kid but uh, I worry about other suitors for for Kanak and Myers and you know, how did this weekend go for, for Nebraska with both of them? What is, what's been their interest level uh, from, from Nebraska? It's high, yes, but where are they at when it comes to pulling the trigger? And where's the, uh, the other offers uh, that, that might be looming? What's the, what's the level of concern? Yeah, I think, I think that uh, Nebraska's done a good job getting in early with both of these kids, both Myers and Kanak. I'll start with Myers. Um, he's a, a little bit further along in the process, I think, at this point. Um, inside linebacker really fits the Big Ten and what Nebraska is looking to do, sideline to sideline guy. Um, that can be a thumper in the Big Ten. Um, Nebraska's battling Kansas State for him, but I think that they've done a really nice job of getting out in front. And really, I don't think he plans on you know going to see any other school guy. Myers until he comes back to Nebraska uh, during that first week of June for an official visit. I think that's going to go end up going Nebraska's way, uh, but you never know because you know crazy things happen in recruiting. When it comes to Jaron Kanak, it's it, it's interesting. He still doesn't have enough as many offers as you would think he has. I think he's still under ten offers um, as a kid that could play either wide receiver or defensive back or maybe even linebacker in some systems in college. Uh, but he ran a ten six hundred meter dash a couple of months ago. Um, really athletic, good football player, and which kind of alluded to and he told this to me yesterday is that Clemson is really stepping up their kind of level of interest in him to the point to where they've got him wanting to take an unofficial visit on June 1st, a couple of days before he's supposed to take his official visit to Nebraska. They have not offered him yet, um, but I think the level of concern should be very high if a Clemson does come through with that offer when he goes out there uh, to see what Clemson has to offer. Greg Smith with us here on Hale Varsity Radio. A lot of recruits in town. Um, I, I've seen some some tweets. Uh, 
you got to help me out with the quarterback's name. MJ Morris. And yeah, MJ, MJ Morris, Morris put out a, a pretty complimentary uh, tweet to, about Husker uh, in the stadium uh, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, just w- what's his status in, in this class? Is he is he pure recruiting yet? Uh, no, uh, but he is he's a kid that it, things have really changed quickly in a way with him um, based on some of the other schools that he was looking at. You know, he had been looking at Florida State heavily along with Nebraska. If you think about it, Florida State and Nebraska were the only two schools that he went and took his own trips to during this spring. Well, before between that visit to Florida State spring game and the visit to Nebraska spring game, Florida State takes a second big-time quarterback in their class, so that leaves the door wide open um, with Morris. Now, I've not caught up with him yet. We have been playing phone tag basically all day, um, so I'll have reaction from him soon. Uh, but all of the indications are that he had a good time, and I wouldn't be surprised if he wouldn't try to make a decision maybe even before that June official visit um, just because quarterback spots are at a premium, and it's tough. Spots are really getting snatched up um, around him. So right now, Morris needs to make a call. It feels like that that'll be happening sooner, sooner rather than later. And what what do the tea leaves say to you, Greg? And I know you have a good relationship with MJ Morris. You, you've talked with him quite a bit. Are we going to have a, an announcement publicly? Do you feel like that Nebraska's in a, in a great spot right here? And then I, I do the math too with with also with Torres not making the trip. Should I read more into that, or is is it still up in the air whether Morris picks Nebraska? I, I mean, it's always still up in the air just because one of the one factor that I don't like um, it, when it comes to just saying, yeah, Nebraska is the clear front runner for Morris is just the proximity. Um, now, Nebraska has done a really nice job in Georgia. And I would have felt even better maybe if, you know, he had had, I don't know if he had the opportunity to meet up with any of those Georgia guys that are here right now. Those are some really good ambassadors for the sure. program. Um, and so that if, that, if I find out that that happened, then that would help a ton. Um, and that will definitely be something nice in Nebraska's back pocket. But he's got Georgia Tech, NC State, or a couple of schools that are a little bit closer to him. But I do think that Nebraska's in a really good spot there. I think the Torres thing is really interesting because he does have an official visit um, on the books to Nebraska. Um, but it, I would think that if MJ Morris wants to be in, he gets that spot over Torres, even though Torres is a pretty good prospect in his own right. So some uh, weapons to talk about. Uh, obviously, we, we've hit on some of the key kids out of Kansas. We hit MJ Morris. Uh, let's focus here on the, the, the 2023 group. And, and Greg, you, you've got some kids that are high level, and, and we got Mooney to, to talk about uh, and his, uh, his partner in crime, the, the five-star wideout uh, that is also from Louisiana. And, and how are things with Mooney? What, what's your read on, on Nebraska's not immediate class, but next class with some of those skill guys? I actually, I really like Nebraska's position with some of these 2023 guys. Um, and I think that any time, and this is usually what kind of happens in this free game, is you get some of those kind of who's who of their future classes coming in. If you think back a couple years ago, um, when Turner Corcoran was making those visits up here, he was a mainstay at the spring games. That's some of those guys that ended up at Nebraska. So it's always good to get those guys here early, a class ahead of time. I think that Reese Mooney is a kid that really likes Nebraska, um, that probably can see himself playing at Nebraska even more so after this weekend. Um, and so I like their position there. It's going to be tough with Sheldon Sampson, the five-star wide receiver. Um, is anytime that you're from Louisiana and you have an LSU offer who puts wide receivers in the league at, at a very high rate, um, that's always going to be tough. But Nebraska will definitely take their chances uh, with him, and especially it would not help if they end up getting Reese Moody in the class because anytime you have a high-level quarterback in your class, that helps your skill position recruiting. Greg Smith's with us, HailVarsity.com and Magazine, recruiting insider at Greg Smith HV on Twitter. Greg, let's go to the the, the game itself and, and just overall feelings. Got a, two minutes here. Uh, running back situation. Uh, I feel good about the running back room, and I think there's enough talent in that room to have a really good run game, and maybe some of those good turn into great. What what did you see Saturday from from the running back kind of coupled with the offensive line? 
Yeah, I liked what I saw from the running backs. I think that it, it was their position, maybe more than any, was kind of hurt by not having full tackle mm-hmm. the entire game because I'm sure they really wanted to be able to show what they could do. Now, that was just one data point, and they got to show um, throughout the spring, even though it was kind of up and down with guys being in and out of the lineup. Um, but that was a showcase opportunity for those running backs as much as any position out there. Uh, but I think a lot of them flashed what you kind of hope to see. I think that what everything that we had heard about Gabe Bourbon, you kind of saw the burst from him um, and some good vision back there. You saw Jock Yant um, run some guys over. Um, you saw Marvin Scott. He, he didn't get to show his breakaway speed like he said after the game that he wanted to be able to do. Um, but he showed some stuff as well. Ronald Tompkins got in there and made some plays. So I think that you come out of that game feeling pretty – you feel better about the running backs but you overall, but you still don't know who the guy is going to be um, going into the fall. That's going to be a battle up until they kick it off and run out there for the first time against Illinois. You know, Greg, three guys real quick. You got uh, Clements, you've got Gifford, uh, and you got No Pola Gates. They they all had quite a quite a few tackles. Uh, they're not on deck yet, but they're right in that on deck circle. Uh, behind uh, a lot of veteran dudes, uh, I think Nebraska might be on the verge of reloading here, right? Uh, with with kind of a next wave and have some depth and some young talent in that back seven. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely like that. All of those guys too can also cut their teeth on special teams, so it all goes hand in hand, right? As, mm-hmm. as they, if the team talks about having that renewed emphasis and focus on special teams, those guys can cut their teeth there and also still make an impact because we've seen that cost Nebraska games. But then also a lot of those guys got some real good work this spring. You think about Pola Gates um, because he's got a couple of veterans ahead of him. They may not have needed as much spring practice time to kind of keep them on a pitch count, and so I'm sure he got a lot of reps. You know. Gifford got a lot of reps because JoJo basically missed the spring, um, alongside Jevin Wright as well, who didn't we didn't get to see on Saturday. Um, and then Clements kind of getting into that mix too with Will Honus's injury. Um, so I do like where they're going with that depth, especially on that defense. I think you've got some nice players there. Greg will keep uh, in contact with you about maybe a commitment this week and awesome work with uh, your recruiting coverage. Thanks so much for time today. Hey, thanks as always. You guys have a great week. You too. There he is, Greg Smith with us, salevarsity.com and magazine at Greg Smith HV. That's where you find him on Twitter. Uh, get into some Husker baseball as a, a rough uh, weekend for the Big Red. How do they bounce back? We'll hear from Will Bolt on the way. He's in his 30s, but sounds like he was born with a stogie in one hand and a brew in the other. Now, say my name. It's Schmitty on Hail Varsity Radio. I got the body of a taut, preteen Swedish boy. Hey, Kramer. Good stuff from Greg Smith, Charlie McBride, Jay Moore today. Podcast, find the show. Uh, HailVarsity.com and the Herd Ad Media Outlet. For sure, but Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, that is uh, where you can uh, go subscribe. It don't cost you nothing. Give us a review. Tell us what you think. We love the feedback, good, bad, or ugly. And it was an ugly weekend for Nebraska. The Husker baseball team now 20-10. and 10, Shut out. 6 nothing. the final game of a three-game series yesterday. Rutgers uh, now at 17-13 and 13 on the year. They are hot. They uh, beat Michigan. They... Worked in Nebraska, 3 nothing, and uh, you had uh, a lead, and you couldn't hang on the first two games of the series, and then Rutgers kind of came out and, and well, gave you a wedgie uh, a few times, and uh, Will Bolt responded to that and uh, wasn't real happy with how Nebraska was. You wondered, how would Nebraska handle success? They've been ultra successful, winning seven straight series, winning close ball games, finding different ways to win. What's the, the level of competition they have faced is, is the question. And while Rutgers is just four games over 500, uh, they have they fared well. And they were really nice offensively and, and did pretty well uh, with their pitching staff over the weekend. Nebraska's bullpen was an issue this weekend. Uh, when it comes to, to scoring runs and runners in scoring position, it wasn't great. And you had all week long, you were ranked, you heard you were ranked, and uh, you know where is your focus and and that you've worked hard as a team and as a coaching staff to to achieve success and jump out and be a leader in the Big Ten for a couple of weeks, but now you got down and now you got knocked down a peg. Now you you've you've kind of got shaken up. How do you respond? Here's Will Bolt, his thoughts yesterday. 
Uh, I would say first and foremost, you got to give their their starter a lot of credit. Um, he was far more competitive than we were today. His stuff was really good. I thought the fastball was good. His command was good. He commanded uh, three different pitches, um, and he was on attack, uh, just absolutely on attack. And you know that being said, um, you know we had a, we had a hangover going uh, from from yesterday. There's no doubt about it, and that starts. You know, that starts with me. That starts with uh, I, I've got to have our team uh, ready to turn the page better uh, than, than obviously that we were today. We didn't set a tone on the mound, uh, at the plate, uh, just all the way around. We just uh, we weren't ready to play. And that's ultimately my job as the head coach. And, you know, we had two games that uh, could have gone either way the first two days um, and it didn't end up on our side. And today uh, we needed to have our best effort to come out and salvage uh, on the day that we know as, as Championship Sunday, and we didn't do that. And again, I got to give Rutgers and their coaching staff and their players all the credit. They're on the backside of two travel weekends in a row, um, and they came in here and just they took it from us. Um, they played a very uh, selfless brand of baseball. We, we've got to obviously be a lot better, and, and I expect that moving forward that we will be. So readiness, kind of that get after it, selfless baseball. Are you getting caught up in the accolades a little too much on top of Rutgers – being hungry and hot coming in uh, over the weekend, you had runners in scoring position the first couple of games, and and then Sunday was, I mean, three three hits. Yeah, so sometimes like on Sunday, you just gotta tip your tip your hat. To you your got, you got out dueled, right? Yeah. Three hits, seven runners uh, uh, total get on base, and three were in scoring position, and that wasn't going to get it done. You got Hallmark and Schwellenbach had tough days to the plate, and. I mean, Schwelly at least got two walks, but you get swept at home. Uh, more from Bolt on the hangover and uh, and readiness here with uh, yesterday's loss in the series sweep. The stuff before the game, you can only tell so much. I mean, the message is pretty consistent, um, you know, with this group as it has been all year long. And um, when you lose two games in that fashion, sometimes that's what happens. And, um, and again, I, I've just got to do a better job, obviously, of getting our guys in the right frame of mind. Um, because we weren't there. We we'd certainly weren't there, and especially to go beat a team of Rutgers caliber who's playing as well as they are, who's playing at, at such a competitively high level that they are. Um, you know, you're not just going to show up and, and expect to just out-talent people and, and just show up and expect people to give it to you. For 29 games before today, I will certainly say that our team has showed up ready to compete, and today was not one of those days. So – What's next for Nebraska is they head to Piscataway. You've got a couple more against Rutgers and Indiana. Indiana surged into the lead. Now, Nebraska is not in any danger zone, no panic. You know, it's it's slim right now. Margin of error is horrible for Nebraska to host a regional. Mar, uh, margin of error to, to, to be in the postseason. You know, does Nebraska move from a, a host site one seed to, to maybe a two seed back to Arkansas or some other spot after a sweep? Yeah, possibly. We'll get some projections from D1 Baseball and Kendall Rogers tomorrow. But Indiana's playing good ball. Nebraska has a chance to, to, to flip this around. Figure it out, fix it, go beat Rutgers, and then go handle Indiana. And then, you know, Michigan looms. And you also have, uh, of course, Northwestern waiting. So there, there's chances for you. The, you, don't, you don't want to turn three into seven or you don't want to, you don't want to hit the skids right now. This is, this is winning time. This is May. Yeah, they, I mean, their destiny is still in their own hands. How many baseball teams go an entire year without losing a single series? No, you, you, hit a, you hit a bump in the road. It's about how you responded. Yeah. Everybody in the Big Tens hit a, hit a parking meter. Yeah, and so I mean, you, you dropped one, and it's, I'm sure this is one that's going to sting. The question is, is how do they respond over the next week? Do they come back fighting next week? Do they go respond to getting swept by going? And I mean, you get another chance at Rutgers next weekend. You could go three and one next weekend and be fine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, or, you, or you could win out. Or I mean, you have two more chances against Rutgers next week. You still can't go win the season series, but three and two look or three to two Rutgers winning the series looks well, a lot better than you know four and one, five and zero. Oh. And and you'll you'll have some clarity too with with where you're at against Indiana because that that's the team right now to catch and in, to beat since it's no longer you. More on that that egg laying by Nebraska baseball from Coach Bolt. You, you can't gloss over losses. I mean, you there, you've got to look in the mirror and, and figure out what you've got to do better. And I I, I know um, just speaking of our focus, our our um, selfless play offensively, I, I see. Uh, maybe some guys chasing their numbers a little bit at, at this point in time where that hasn't really been an issue for the entire season. Just time and time again, we've showed up and just played uh, keep the line moving type of baseball. 
and that's not kind of what we've seen here of late. And our focus, because of that, maybe has gone inward, and it shows up a little bit on defense at times as well. So, like I said, for 29 games, I'll give our guys all the credit in the world. They We have showed up ready to compete at a high level, even when we've lost. Um, and I felt that way the first two games this weekend. It just didn't go our way in the end. Today was not one of those days. Uh, you know, there's no other way, shape, <laughs> way to look at it. And I, you know, I feel like I need to apologize to our fans. I mean, we they showed up in huge numbers this weekend. And and we had a chance to salvage something today, and then we laid a big egg. Last thought here from Bolt when it comes to bouncing back. Uh, they'll have a week of practice to do it, and we'll hear from Will Bolt next segment. Is that true? Yes. Okay, that, that is true. Well, let's qualify. Let's do that. All right? Caller 9 right now, 466-3776. There is your sounder, the ESPN Memorial Day kickoff. Get in line right now. Qualify for your chance to win that Weber Grill from Capital Patio and the Flame Shop, the $100 gift card to Campbell's Nursery and Garden Center, and a $100 gift card to Leon's Gourmet Grocer. The uh, ESPN Memorial Day kick off this trifecta, a grill, a gift card to Campbell's, a gift card to Leon's. Caller 9 now, 466-3776-466-3776. Or sneak in on the 800 line, 1-800-825-5865. Caller 9 qualifies right now with Hale Varsity and ESPN. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HaleVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. Big thanks to Mickey and John. They qualified today for the ESPN Memorial Day kickoff. May 21st, we'll do the giveaway. Got to be listening to win, but that's a grill. That's a gift card to Campbell's. That's a gift card to Leon's. And uh, can also log on ESPNLincoln.com. Qualify that way. You are not barred from limiting. Yeah, that was Mickey's. Uh, or limited from as many times as you want to call or, or enter in. So. Yeah, that, that was Mickey's second time getting his name in the box. A little luck on his side. And I know John, he, he's going to continue calling. He told me that first hour. He said he wants that grill more than anything. Good for John. I love the tenacity. Love the tenacity. Busy week uh, last week and into the weekend. We are loaded up again tomorrow. We'll run down Coach Rick Kaczynski. Going to talk with Kaz tomorrow, Mitch Sherman. And then uh, the newest member of the Chargers, Brendan Hybus, will be with us tomorrow. So excited to talk with him. That uh, is uh, big time. Uh, kudos to your man, Elijah Herbal, for lining that up. So, uh, yeah, so good weekend, good football. Uh, intrigued to see where things go for Nebraska, but I thought the lines of scrimmage were good. I liked Adrian throwing slant routes if I'm a Nebraska fan. And, uh, yeah, what Coach McBride's so true, if you're thudding and then you go to tackling, defense uh, was, was kind of all out of sorts trying to make some open field tackles. It's spring. You got a chance to, to party and celebrate football's return and normal life. I got to say thanks to, to our friend uh, Vic in Denver, uh, Vic drove out for the spring game. Vic came by to uh, say what's up. Vic brought me my Christmas bonus, which was a, not what you're thinking from Colorado, not that kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Vic brought a, a bottle of Templeton rye. Mm. God love Vic. And Vic's a runner, and he's also he was having a heater while he was listening to us uh, in the rail yard. He's good stuff, him and his little boy. So that was great. Uh, it was good to see Cranack on site. And uh, he's still as ornery as ever, and we're uh, loaded up. I'm going to be in uh, Bryson City, Missouri. Hold on. North Carolina. That'd be a wrong plane trip. I think of Bryson City. Uh, I'm going to be in North Carolina, right at the, uh, the mouth of the Smoky Mountain National Park on Friday, doing a show from Cousin Dino's. So I'm so excited that, to see him, biggest Nebraska fan you'll ever meet. Uh, love him dearly, and we're going to go visit Dino uh, on Friday. So we'll be doing a show from uh, for what, not we're like forty five minutes from Clemson's campus, in that part of North Carolina that's bordering a hundred different states. Yeah, you get yourself uh, an interview with Dabo. I could try that. 
We'll see. I don't know. Just go find his address. Go knock on his front door. Just that, that would work well. <laughs> Chris Schmidt, Hail Varsity Radio. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey, I, I could probably get his number from Coach Stallings. Mm. That's who he played for. I don't know. I, uh, you, 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 that's, my, that's my job this week is to get an interview with Dabo. I, I locked in the Brendan Hymas. So. Sure. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Hymas, Dabo, uh, tomato, tomato. We'll see if it, it works out. Uh, good stuff. Enjoy your Monday. Reminder to buckle up. 70% of people in fatal crashes in Nebraska not wearing a seatbelt. If used properly, seatbelts can reduce the risk of fatal injury by up to 60%. Your best defense. Buckling up. Brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety. Talk to you tomorrow on Hale City. Thanks.